tape wagon. <laughs> <laughs> That's not sobs. No, well, man cannot live by sob alone. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this channel. We just finished another car stories. We were very much in sob la la land. I shot Mark Skinner with two of his sobs that he's got. It's a EMS, 99 EMS and a 9000 Arrow, both of which are going to be for sale shortly on uh, Bring a Trailer, I believe. Yeah, now that we wrapped up, we're going to do a little walk and talk. We're still in his garage in his little showroom here. I really love what I'm seeing. Uh, there's two cars here that we didn't shoot. They're both very unique. They're different from the EMS that we shot, but still have a lot of distinct Saab features. This is Mark. This is the Saab guru here. Tell us where we are and uh, what the showroom is for you. Uh, this is my little Saab uh, <laughs> pleasure dome. I've been, you know, looking for special models sort of in the 99 to 9,000. And uh, this is what I got. One we didn't really look at is this very special, again, Saab 99, but this is the turbo which was only uh, available in 1978. Just uh, one year? Yeah, the, the Sport 99 was the EMS, which stood for Electronic Manual Special. Mm. So that was their jazzed up sport model before they did the turbo. And this was the iconic Saab 99 turbo that everybody, you know, this was as top gear, Jeremy Clarkson says, this was their dark side of the moon. Uh -huh. This is the hit everyone remembers. Uh -huh. So I finally got one. I, this is actually the reason I kind of got into this. I wanted one of these. So this one will be uh, being brought up a notch. It's in pretty great shape now, but I'm gonna be doing some more work to it. And it'll be out shortly. And then in 1979, they rolled into the 900 the iconic 900 and that's I, the blue one yeah i used to have a 92 900 and i do want to get another coupe although they um, are getting more deer nowadays but this is the five door with the opera window and this is the opera window yep they only brought this into america for two years the first year of the 900 which was 79 and 1980 they ran it you could get this model in europe all the way through but us in America, only two years. This is the first year 900. Uh, and this is the car that was actually on the catalog or the, the brochure. And uh, Bjorn Borg, tennis player, did an ad with these as the super sweet. Same color, same velour interior. This, you know, aquamarine blue velour. It's kind of dark, maybe, maybe you'll get it. Yeah, it's a little dark, but that's okay. But you know, you can, you can get the door clunk, right? Listen to this. Let's just watch this. It's like a bank fault. <laughs> it feels like it weighs, you know, 400 pounds, but it's all on its own hinges, and then you let it go. Yeah. Very nice. Very satisfying sound. Yeah, so this is aquamarine blue metallic. It's just, just amazing car. Beautiful. And look at that. 900 turbo plate. Who, who thought that would be available? <laughs> I feel like you kind of said it yourself. Sobs were, they're kind of like an underdog, I feel like, in America at least, because they're such well built, well engineered, over engineered cars that are so utilitarian, but also unique in their looks and design. Also, very safe. They came with automatic options, manual options, turbo, naturally aspirated. Yeah, but the only model that I feel like that ever gets a lot of. It's not even like fully mainstream love, but I guess like more mainstream the like once you get beneath like the layer of imports and then BMWs, let's say, and Audis, then it's like, oh, the, the SPG, right? Yeah, that's, that's like the only Saab that ever really gets shine. The 900 Turbo. Right. And the SPG was the, well, they called it Aero in Europe like this. Um, but when General Motors purchased some of them, Oldsmobile had the name Aero, so General Motors wouldn't let them use it, so they called it SPG Special Performance Group, mm -hmm. which was something that was just kind of made up for the American market. But that's a 900 with all the body kit and the bells and whistles, um, and that is totally iconic now, and I was fortunate enough to get a very nice one and sell it, and it sort of brought the whole market up. Mm -hmm. which, you know, is a blessing and a curse because now even moi, Mr. Saab guy, you know, they're getting pricey. And 
You're saying you single-handedly brought up the market? Well, I, I wouldn't say single-handedly, okay. but I was one person who sold uh, a 900 SPG, and at the time it was a record. And then, was it on BAT? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, people have cursed me and said like, oh, you're the guy. And I'm like, look, it wasn't me. It was the guy that bought it. <laughs> yeah. And, and it wasn't even him. There was several other people. It wasn't just one guy. Right. There was like four or five people that bid this car, the 30s, the 40s, which was unheard of. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, for the faithful, it's uh, made it more difficult for me to go get another yeah, 900. Of course. But, you know, these things happen. I guess it's, I've had also a lot of people older people that had these, I was like, well, you know, good on you now. You know, because we're all trying to maintain these cars and the market just wasn't there. Like people are like, hey, you know, are you gonna restore it? And I'm like, you can't restore, restore a Saab and sell it and think you're gonna, you know, it's not the Porsche BMW market. Right, right, right. But um, I'm, I, that just happened, it was a fluke. I, I never expected it and, um, you know, we'll see. But I got this one, and I'm really happy with it. This this blue car, I'll, I'll keep. Yeah. You know. That's a good call. And is it fully functional, like aside from the battery kind of failing out yeah. on you? Well, the battery's old, so that just is a, a thing from time. But this car went up to the, uh, what is it now? It's 23, uh, 2021. This went up to Albany. The, both these cars drove to Albany mm -hmm. in July to the owner's convention. And this car won the uh, Concours uh, first place. And this one, I should have put it in, I put it in the uh, people's choice, uh, won third place. Mm -hmm. But they both drove up and drove back. Yeah, this car is fully functional. And I've driven it up to uh, Lime Rock, uh, where I do a show up there. So yeah, everything I have works. You know, and I, I basically use them, um, unless if I'm selling them, then of course they kind of get put aside. Yeah. But yeah, it's all about bringing them out. You know, they're sobs. It's, you know, they're not like... They're built to be driven. Yeah, all, all machines are. And these, you know, the, the price points just, you know, they weren't $100,000 cars. You know, they're sobs. And they're built to be used, and they they really do better when they are used. I think all machines are that way. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Now, all these cars, did you buy them before the pandemic? Um, let's see. Before the pandemic, before the pandemic. Uh, this might have been during the pandemic. Did the market... No, no, I, I, don't, I don't think I bought any... Maybe I got this one during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Well, did the market skyrocket on Saabs, especially these vintage Saabs, the same way that it did for, you know, pretty much any other, like an E30 M3, let's say, or whatever else that was out there that people realized was collectible and worth a penny? You know, I, I, think, I think really what, what's happened is things got priced, everything got priced up, 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 and people started to look around like, well, what's iconic? and European and quality and fat, you know. And it was always like we in the community were like sob, sob, sob. But everyone's like, yeah, yeah, your sob story, whatever, you know. Um, could, could never understand it. Like I used to say about the SPG, the, the car was iconic when it, it was, it was iconic back then. It was rare back then. It was expensive back then. But you know, it just wasn't commanding the prices. And, you know, to the point where they were sort of looked after. A lot of people did keep them and have maintained them forever. And they're, they're, they're hidden. They're out there. But some of them got handed down and sort of ended up a little rough. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody in the community knew what they were in the Saab community. But the, the world at large was sort of, you know, Porsche, BMW, Audi. Sure. And, you know, um, I love Saabs. I <laughs> just, you know. So you keep on mentioning the community. Is it a big community in the States, the Saab community? It's, it's a very large community. It's, it's a very involved community. Um, the demographic for Saab, and this is another, like, you know, the general GM, like, how could they screw that up? You know, they were the, the, the most educated demographic car buyers, Saab buyers. They were the most loyal. 
you know, the, it's fanatical. It's almost, you know, you, like, look, you buy one and you end up, <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I'm not a cult or anything. Yet you get into them and all people say, you know, and then I get another one and then I get another one. And a lot of cars are like that. But Saab people are incredibly loyal. I, I go to Carlisle. I'll be going this year and the international show. So it has every, every mark. Everything from Renaults to Mercedes-Benz to the Japanese makers. The largest group there, Saab. Saab runs the show. It's not a Saab-specific show, but you almost think it is. They have this gigantuan Saab tent. You know, it's like, I wouldn't say like a dirigible thing, but it's much bigger than any wedding tent. It's that kind of a tent. Big enough to put many cars that won first place the previous year with picnic tables. And um, they're the largest, the largest group at the international performance show every year in May. Interesting. Where is that? It's in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay, okay. And Carlisle's a big fair. It's a big arena, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, you know, there's the Ford show. There's the Corvette show. There's like everybody goes there. So Carlisle hosts these massive shows. Um, but the international show, which is all international cars, European cars, Japanese, all over the world. Saab's the biggest participant. Interesting. Defunct brand. You know. Right, yeah. Defunct brand that everyone's like, uh oh, yeah. Why do they go out of business? Was it kind of like to their detriment how good their cars were that they overspent? And or did they kind of just lose appeal the same way that you speak of like the, the collector's market, how well, it lost its appeal? You know, there's there's a lot of different takes. I think I think succinctly they were never able to sell the volume that it takes to be in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, and they overbuilt. Yeah. <laughs> they were not, you know, they weren't doing badge engineering. They weren't, they were doing very expensive things and they couldn't make new platforms. They couldn't come up. So they would make the 99 and release it in 79 and take it all the way to 94 you know, basically the same car, mm -hmm. you know, where other manufacturers would be changing all the time. And so they couldn't really afford uh, to tool up. Well, can't you kind of, can't you argue that that's what Porsche did with the 911? Well, you know, I, I mean, I guess technically speaking, their generations yeah. were substantially different and it wasn't so many years apart that they would switch generations. But for the most part, uh, I guess, is that what you speak of, though, is like the, the actual generations where the body stayed pretty much identical? Yeah, they, I mean, okay. they tweaked it, but it was the same car. Mm -hmm. You know, they were refining it, but they were not able. You know, Porsche, they, they had trouble, too. You know, Porsche got into some, oh, yeah. which I don't know the whole story, but I know that, you know. Was I think it, it was late 80s, early 90s, what, right? What that they went out was of business. The, was it the four-wheel drive that they came out? Like one car, like. Cayenne. Cayenne or something? I, I don't know. They, they were going to get. the Boxster maybe because yeah. it was so cheap and budget friendly? I, I don't follow them as, as closely uh, because that market's just taken off. And, um, but Saab, Saab had difficulty in, in, in the economics of manufacturing. And hence they tried to do, you know, a partnership with Fiat and we'll, we'll do this platform together. We'll do a chassis together and we can share parts and it'll be cheaper for all of us and we'll do it as a group. But of course Saab is like, oh no, we don't like the crash test so we're gonna do our own thing. And they just, you know, they changed the car completely. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love what they do. This is, I think, one of the, the greatest cars around, but economically, it didn't know. work. It didn't work. It's sad. Um, you know, and uh, you know, isn't it true about a lot of things? Uh, even even manufacturers that stay in business now, they'll come out with something, and we all remember, oh, that was really good. But they don't make it like that anymore. They'll do one thing really well, but then it's too expensive, so they kind of it it sort of uh, diminishes over time. You know, it's hard to to adhere to a high standard and to be consistent in hitting the mark. When yeah, I mean, I think it's also, it's just a, a symptom of the times. Like, these days, 
We're never going to get like an E30 or E36 or a Mercedes Benz like 190E, you know what yeah, I mean? Or, or the 124, or the S Class. W140 S Class. Maybe that's the one the I'm fat speaking body of. The Benz. The right before the Chrysler merger, right? Yeah. Like the, the square the, one. Yeah, the big yeah, one. Yeah, the yeah, one yeah. that uh, Lady Di was in the accident. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that was like the generation yeah. where it was just such fierce competition between all those German manufacturers. And, but these days, yeah, they're like, I think they snuck a little too many projects past the accounting teams. And then they're like, hold on, we're either going to go bankrupt or, you know, we just need to cut some costs here and there. It starts depreciating. And these days, there is just, there's more of a monopoly on auto manufacturers and who owns them. Right. And I feel like that kind of starts to deteriorate at the quality cars become more homogenous, like for better or worse, there's so many manufacturers now, like let's say Audi and Lamborghini, RSQ8 and the Lamborghini Urus, pretty much the same power plant and platform, but one is just detuned. So it just becomes like more marketing and about like catering to the audience or the market itself, as opposed to being like, no, 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 we build what we think is gonna be good and utilitarian and strong, and it's gonna represent how we build things, as opposed to like, you know, the rich soccer mom gets the RSQ8, right? They've and then the dickhead group. with the, you know, the, the Bitcoin balance right. is gonna get the worse. Yeah, or the TikTok so it's, it's sort of like, you know, they're, they're designing by committee and, whatnot and uh sure in the old days it was like i just remember a, a an interview with bill ruger who was uh, one of the last you know living uh, firearms manufacturers mm -hmm. and he was you know making pistols and rifles and things and they interviewed him and said well how do you know something's gonna sell or you know the public's gonna want it and he's like oh i, I just built it for myself mm -hmm. like if it passed if i like it you're you know, definitely going to like it. The public, you know, if it passes my... Yeah. And, you know, that was kind of how it was. The Mercedes, what was their thing? Uh, the best or nothing at all. Mm -hmm. You know, bank financing got involved and, you know, the whole the world economy. It used to be this is a German car with German parts and boom, done. And this is a, this and this. I mean, this has a lot of hella. This has a lot of German parts in it. But, you know, they, they used to be there was real nationalism and there was yeah. real pride in the company. But then, you know, I mean, Mercedes sells for, you know, they sell all sorts of stuff. I don't I can't even keep up with it anymore. They sell so many There's a stuff, lot of classes. You know, yeah. and it's like a lot of things uh, within that class and, you know, the S class. They tried that Maybach thing for a while. I guess now it's the S class is back up as the best. But, you know, you, that's how they can afford maybe to build a few cars that are just over the top. Mm -hmm. But, it, you, you know, I, I used to go to this old German mechanic and he said, you know, back in the day, the, the poorest people that could uh, afford a Mercedes were, were doctors and bankers. You know, it was just for industrialists. And you know, he's like, now everybody has a Mercedes. Right. Because they're renting them. He's like, he's now, now the, you know, whatever. Like anyone can get one. Yeah. And you see them. They're like everywhere. And you see different nomenclature. I don't even know what they are anymore. But... You know, that's sort of like at the end of, it was like the end of the analog age in the late 90s, early 2000s. There were still some really old school type of things that were designed in the 90s and came out in the early 2000s. But then bank financing got involved and everybody started renting cars. And when that happens, you know, people used to come in and buy it and keep it and maintain it. Then it's like, oh, every year I get a new one. I trade it in. So the manufacturers are like, what do we do? What are we knocking ourselves out yeah, for? Yeah, exactly. It's all about ka-ching, ka-ching, in, out. Yeah. And it, cha it changed. And now we just have gray, silver, and white cars, and yeah. black. You know, there's like, you don't have the choices. You certainly don't see these kind of colors. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> or this car you could get in all different uh, forms, but with like all these different engines. And when I was younger, my father's time, you went into a dealership and you were like, I want this suspension package, I want this engine, I want this interior, and they would make the car. And I know Porsche still does some of that, but that's a very high market thing. Nowadays you go to get a car and they look around what they can find. Maybe we can get one that's close to your, but it's not like you order your car anymore unless you're in that very exclusive market. Right. Um, 
So, I, you know, I've become a curmudgeon now. I'm now, you know, officially into the geezer phase where I'm like, you know, analog America. Um, this stuff suits me just fine. Yeah. I have no intention to get, you know, this early, late 90s, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. I think that's the golden age. Yeah. I, I, that's, again, my opinion. You know, you see what they were... You know, even like some of the Aston Martins, you know, early 2000s, the Vanquish and things like that, really special. And not that, they, not that they're not now, but there's so much money. I mean, yeah. you know, $300,000 cars. To, I mean, to that, that's normal to a lot of people. Yeah. You know, it's like, yep. I'm like, that's, that's a cottage on a nice... Right. You know, that's a, that's a nice... <laughs> yeah. That's not a car, but... If you can afford it, great. But it's for me, I'm sort of stuck here now. <laughs> Until yeah. I get, you know, the next big station wagon or something. That of course. Is ridiculous, ridiculous. It's so organized in here. Well, I'm trying to, this orange car came with a lot of parts. It came with a whole array of parts. So I'm trying to go through them all and catalog them and photograph them. Um, and, you know, I've been picking up parts yeah. For this car, for the 900, and certainly for the turbo. You can see I have a couple of air dams down here. Oh, I've got another one in a box. You know, they're, they're uh, original and dashboards and seats. I've got a bunch of blue seats. You know, there's a mm -hmm. tear in the fabric. You go buy new fabric, it doesn't match because it's like fresh dye. It's not right. really the same stuff. So I bought old seats to have an upholster person cut them out and sew them in. And Is it hard to find used parts for all these cars? You know, it, it, the 99s, uh, it's more of a challenge. Uh, the 900s and the 9000s, there's some little parts that are, but the, like again, the network and the group of people that are out there, um, they're very, it's like this with all cars. You get into your, your community, your community yeah. and everyone's like, hey, I'm on, you know, you get yeah. into these things and uh, people will help you and, and stuff. Yeah. But for instance, I have, I have one of these, I have a black car and one of the, the aero badges got uh, damaged um, and <laughs> you can't find them. I had some guy in Europe, he said he had one, but he mm -hmm. wanted $350 for a little plastic badge that cost... I don't know, six or nine dollars. So I mean, some things, but n not as far as keeping them running. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never been stranded. I've never um, been like, oh, cars down, months, weeks, never, never. It's like you can get stuff, and there's aftermarket people. Um, so I'm, I'm happy. I, I Saab has been very good to me, and because I'm, I'm like anybody else, I don't want to go and get stranded. I don't want to be dealing with, that. I don't have time for that, you know, and that hasn't been my experience. Although I have a lot of people, you know, tell me their sob stories. Um, and, you know, when, when my mom and my dad had that one back in the 70s, the people in our hometown didn't know how to work on it. So mm -hmm. they would attach things wrong and then you take the car out and more things would happen because of that. And, uh, but if you have a good mechanic, you're good with all cars, you're yeah. in good shape. So yeah. But what did it take to bring the company back? They tried, they tried twice, three times. They just... No dice. No, they were gonna electric, they did NEVS, National Electric Vehicles of Sweden, China Consortium. They just showed a car that they'd been working on. That was the big teaser in the media recently. Like this is what Saab had been working on. But they're taking a hiatus, it's like, you know, the market's gone now more towards electric, so they were going to electrify the 9.3, but the 9.3 wasn't really selling all that great. It was an old platform when GM kicked them to the curb, so mm -hmm. I was always a little dubious about that. But supposedly they were going to electrify all these 9.3s and sell them in Brazil and Turkey and China, but it, it never came to fruition. And Saab, the aeronautics and weapons manufacturer took the name back because they bankrupted oh. twice. So Whoa. they're like, guys, you can't have our name logo. Yeah. So they took it back. So then they, they did NEVS, National Electric Vehicles 
of Sweden. Mm, okay. And it's been sad. I mean, because it... <laughs> they just like won't I, die already? They just keep on trying to hold on for dear life? Well, everybody... You know, Saab has gotten a lot of attention recently, you know, since I've been, you know, working with this. It, look, I, I'm, I'm a newbie in, in this marketplace. There's people, people that help me. They've been doing this for 30, 40 years. I mean, I got my license in one, you know, 40 some years ago and I knew of them. But there's people who have been steadfastly in this marketplace, you know, wrenching and buying and repairing. And I take off my hat to those people because that's those are the people that I go to and say help, and they and they do help. Um, so there's a people that have been at this much longer, um, but now and and now uh, the brand is young people are getting involved, mm -hmm. and you know there's a, a passing of the torch because it was a great brand. You know they they did things very well and they did things differently and um, they made a great product. Great advertising, you know, great wheels. I mean, the Saab wheels are just, yeah. you know, they're just, just cut from a different cloth. So people are taking notice now. And because they are affordable in this market that kind of went crazy. Uh, over For the, now. Yeah. Things might change again. But yeah. uh, Would you ever consider electrifying one of these? No, I have no interest in electric cars. And that's, not, I'm, again, I'm not... Uh, saying they don't have their place, but I, I kind of don't understand the just the blind sort of rush to like we're going to completely stop making, uh, you know, the petroleum cars. Yeah, I don't, you know, and, and these are all classic, so maybe we'll get grandfathered in. But you hear things like California is going to, you know, you know, make the you know, internal combustible engine illegal, and you, you hear all this stuff. I mean, we're all working and we have busy lives. Whether it's you know just Michigas or if it's real, I don't know. Uh, but this mad rush, everything electric, um, I just don't think the, the carbon footprint is all that clean, as clean as they're. Oh, know. with electric cars, yeah, they're Absolutely not even talking not. about it. It's not, yeah. And, yeah. and there's you know all the batteries and and the big thing they're not talking about is the effect of electromagnetic fields on our bodies. Sure. I, I haven't seen one article. I mean, you're sitting on these batteries. You go to these pumping these stations, and uh, I don't know the, the scientific term, but it's a lot of kilowatts or whatever mm -hmm. it is. It's a lot. I mean, you can hear it. Woo, the buzzing. Yep. And people just sitting there, you know, on their phone, woo, yeah. sitting on these batteries. Right. I don't know, you know. Yeah. So I just... I, I'm not, you know, I'm older now, and I don't, drive all that much. I live in the city. I can take transportation. Um, I don't put a lot of miles on any of my cars, you know. So for me, it, if it's not broke, you know, I don't have to fix it. Um, you know, I've been in some electric cars and I get it. It's, I was in a Tesla. I called an Uber and I got a Tesla. So I was checking it out. I haven't driven one yet, but um, it's, it's just not for me. Mm -hmm. I'm, a more analog. Yeah. Um, real quick, my battery's about to die. Okay. But I'll, I'll quit uh, so, yammering on. No, 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 no. This is exactly what this is for. Um, so you had showed me earlier, like obviously we see all these wheels and whatnot, this whole array of vintage Saab wheels, but you showed me in Swaggles a couple of things that were almost like little relics. Oh yeah. I've still got, boxed up. I've got I think, some boxes over. Let me grab a European headlight sure. over here. I mean, these are, you know, you get these things. I've got a lot of stuff. Saab computers. But these are, these are European lamps. Wow. For the 900. And, you know, of course, the European lamps are a little different. Where do you find this and, stuff? Like eBay? Well, this is, you know, you go to these, these meets like Carlisle. You've got to get there early and come with a lot of cash. And, you know, I'm trying not to do it so much anymore. But, you know, you, you find these things and who knows whether they, they work and all that. But, yeah. you know, it's, they're, they're glass and they're, you know, old European lamps for the 900. Is there any companies that recreate these present day with like... 
you know, resealed newer tech maybe? Because I know, for example, in the BMW world, a lot of people for, let's say, E36s, they'll go with depot headlights because yeah. they're glass. So there, well, there's some there's some cheap lights that, um, but I'm not aware of any. Um, I'm sure they're out there, but I always try to just get these old Saab, you know, new old stock um, or OEM. But show me that uh, the head. The oh, this head. this is a there's a there's a big story behind this. Um, so Saab had the four cylinder eight valve engine and that's a four cylinder eight valve engine with a turbo that's four cylinder eight valve and but then they went to the uh, 16 valve head and that was you know the with the 900 going forward that that's a 2.3 liter that's the later 9000 but that also has 16 valves mm -hmm. um, well, they, when they were switching over from the eight valve head to the 16 valve head, the story was that one of the executives at Saab North America called up the prior owner of the orange car, Dr. Bill Jenkins, and said, hey, you know, Bill, we're, we're making the new 16 valve head. When we're new, using this new diesel alloy, well, we're gonna make some eight valve heads. Um, we're not really telling people this. It's just something we made some. And you really should have one of these. So that's what's in this box. It's this eight valve head that's apparently made from uh, you know, a, a different alloy that they were using on the new 16 valve head. And should I take it out of the box or? Yeah, yeah, you know, you I'd love to see it. Take a look at this. If we can bring it out into the light right here on the carpet too. Is this one of the parts that you got when you bought the car? Um, yeah, this is, well, I, I got this from that car, but this is a, this is a very interesting part. Wow. You ever gonna install it or are you just gonna keep it in the box? Was that a receipt? Yeah. So this is the seat. This is the executive right here. This is the guy. Thank you, Mr. Lawgren. And the date on this is 1989. And where's it? I have another one that shows the price, but this is um. Oh, that's super cool. So it's the alloy. It's the alloy that's used in this mm -hmm. that's different. Mm -hmm. That was being forged for the new 16 valve head. So this is the 8 valve head. Very cool. Yeah, and I have the paperwork somewhere else for the, but I, I think this was back in 89. I think this was like a $800, $900 part. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like this, it's, there's people that have a lot of things and they're now, you know, sort of windling down their supply and they're, they're changing their locations or their buildings are getting, you know, so sales come up and people are really trying, the Saab Museum's doing a great job of, of collecting parts. Where's that? It's out in um, South Dakota. Oh, wow. I, I hope that's, I'm getting that right. Um, it's out there, and they had last year's, this year's uh, owner's convention is going to be in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Last year it was was way out there, and I didn't go because, you know, I, it's just a long, I didn't want to put that kind of miles on the car. And it was a long time. It was like a two-week, you know, to go out there. You know, well, you didn't have to spend two weeks, but. The process. Yeah. So that's this. Um Cylinder head assembly. Yeah, I have a lot of parts. I have a lot of seats. I have seats that are like brand new in the box. But I, you know, I'm probably going to have to find somebody who needs them because I, I don't know. You know, we all get this stuff hoping someday that you'll install it. Yeah, yeah. but does the someday ever come? And 
Right. That's where it's like, you know, you just want to help fellow enthusiasts and keep these cars going. Yep. Um, so, yeah. A little bit here, a little bit there. Excellent. Yeah. It's, it's been a wild ride, you know. I feel, I feel blessed. I mean, look, look at this. They don't make cars like this anymore. The 9,000 Aero. It's just amazing. Is it just me or, you know, does, can you see like the detail in this thing? It doesn't look like anything else. You know, you see a Mercedes sedan and a BMW sedan and yeah, they're, you know, the E34, great car. And yet something about this was like, like space potty. This is like a space pod. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it is kind of like a land rocket. It's very cool. And, you know, they also hired Giorgetto Gigiaro to design it. So that's another thing. You know, in the, in the 90s and 70s and 80s, they get together with these designers and do cars like, you know, Bertone and, you know, Pina Farina. And, you know, today, not so much, right? Yeah. I don't know. You know I'm, I'm sure there's still some. I'm probably misspeaking. But that was... Uh, Saw they, they really they tried. And they did. And I got one. <laughs> I think I got two of these. I feel blessed to have two of these cars. Very beautiful. Alright, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. Okay. I think the rest of the story or a more uh, summarized, polished up story will be in the next car stories featuring Mark. Yeah. So make sure to subscribe. Look out for that. Absolutely. Hopefully so, we'll come out in the next, I don't know, two weeks. I know you're trying to sell these cars ASAP. So, well, it's, I'm trying to get the, you know, all the things that are required for a bring a trailer, which is never easy. Cause I'm a little bit of a, you know, I want it to be just right and show yeah. everybody everything, which is like a driving thing and a cold start. Yeah. And a, let me tell you the history of it. And yeah, you know, it's, it's an effort, but yeah, a worthy one. A worthy one, yeah. And you have to do it because, you know, if you're buying sight unseen sort of thing and you're going to take that, that risk, you know, that's, mm -hmm. I mean, bring a trailer vets everybody and, and we all, you know, put our best foot forward. But I, you know, I've, because I've purchased things before and, you know, you really want someone to show you everything. So if you have a question, you can then type in and say, send right. me a picture of that or tell me about this. Right. So that's another thing. Well, you know, once you get through the whole process, then for seven days, you're like, you have to be hunkered down and ready to, yeah. you know, respond. And not like, well, I'm, I'm going out tonight. <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> you got to be there. Check out Mark. I'm bringing trailer coming soon and check out his car stories also coming even yeah. sooner and check out Tom at car stories he's got a lot of good content um, a lot of good content trying and well no you're not trying you're doing and and the people that you're finding they're they're all you know I'm not saying this about myself but they're you get some really high quality folks <laughs> keep it up thank you